Hi, welcome to AlvinHartley.com. I am in my summer vacation mode, t-shirt and all. No, I, and we put out on Facebook some requests for some topics. And um, one of my friends down in Houston, Texas, a great individual, he's a, uh, a dentist down there, was a college football player, great guy, asked why we are falling behind on our uh, when education is falling behind, basically, was the question. So, and I, I wanted to give my opinion on that on a variety of topics. Number one, uh, I will. I am in favor of a couple of things: uh, non-compulsory education after the age of twelve. Yes, I think that once a kid um, gets to a certain age, they should not be compulsed to go to school. They should be uh, forced to have a job. But if they can find gainful employment in a rapidly changing economy, a t typical academic structure may not be what's best for them. Obviously, college may not be what's best for them, especially if they're going to go into massive amounts of debt and not be able to obtain proper employment. So I think we have a disconnect between the needs of our economy and our educational system. Secondly, I think that we have been trying to teach all children the same uh, from a public school point of view and that is a huge mistake. Um, females and males learn differently, they develop differently, they have different um, challenges academically when they're younger and I think we have to get very aggressive on how we um, start to merge uh, girls and boys at the same time. I think that is a really important aspect to separate girls and boys and give them the education that meets their learning styles. Third, we have an entrenched, bloated academic system that spends more money per student than any country in the world with worse results. So that'll tell you something, money doesn't fix the problem. So uh, I'm in favor of a uh, full voucher program. That is, in my opinion, the only way lower economic uh, citizens can uh, vote with their feet and get out of poverty using our educational system. Along with that, I believe a standardized transportation system that is publicly subsidized so that uh, lower income individuals do not have to spend a disproportionate amount of their disposable income on transportation. So if they can't afford a car, they can still trans uh, be able to be transported back and forth all over the place. And I believe that should be heavily subsidized. So. Um, in some areas where there are concentrations of lower income people, uh, mass transit is very poor, especially in a, a suburban area like uh, Hampton Road, Virginia. And there's other places where if you don't have a vehicle, you can't transport yourself from one job to the next. Um, many people who train buses around here have to take three or four transfers to get out to their locality that they are working at. So I think to fix education, you have to start with some of the basic needs of the people. And one of that is to have a, I think, a natural gas or electric bus system that works to and from major areas of the city so that lower income people can get on the bus and get off the bus without wasting time, energy, and effort transporting themselves. I think they should have vouchers so that any monies that are used can be um, put into a school system that's going to increase its value so that lower income folks can use the money to vote for better schools. I also think our educational system needs to be dramatically changed in regards to the level of testing we do that is not related to any type of acceptable form of manageable understanding of how to connect the dots in a new economy. So I, I think there are some kids who are taking AP Calculus who will never use AP Calculus and they don't know how to handle basic finance. Okay, <laughs> it's a problem. And AP Calculus is really good for people who want to become mathematicians and academics, but if you are learning to become an accountant, maybe you can use some calculus, maybe not. I think just learning how to have basic finance would be a really advantage to a lot of people. So the overall arch problem here is that we are using a 1950s, 1940s model, how to educate people, putting them in large classrooms, restricting them into um, settings that do not allow for kids who are now less attentive to learn properly. And 
we're not allowing for a technology to sort of not be uh, used properly. So uh, using textbooks, that is ridiculous. We shouldn't be spending money on textbooks. Th those are all digitized. <laughs> there shouldn't be textbooks being lugged around in the school anymore. They should be using iPads or tablets to access the information accordingly. So they, we, we need to really take a strong approach to modernizing our educational system and adding a social aspect to it that captures the kids who are struggling to maintain themselves in a new economy. And I think if you're going to do that, you have to give lower income, middle income people choice. And the way you do that is through the ability to not use their disposable income in negative ways. Uh, over using their disposable income for transportation and housing and health care. Those are huge. So in order to fix the education problem, we've got some other problems to fix. So that's just a couple ideas on how to fix that. And I'd uh, love to hear some feedback from you. Thanks. Bye.